All right, Legends, Maddie has been able to join us for the trades video. So he's going to go through his squad from last week and and his trades coming into this week. And then, uh, yeah, help me help me sort out my trades, mate, because the head-to-head squad was really easy. My team, I've got four players I want for two trades. And just so FYI, guys, we have three trades available from next week. So if we do have another lot of carnage, we can use it. But when's a good time to start holding, Matty? It's a, been a tough, tough bunch of weeks. Yeah, look, I think in past years, we'd, we'd be like definitely bank some trades in this initial period. But this season seems to be just not allowing for that. So I think it's fine to just keep keep double trading. Um, once we open up to the three trades going from next week, you definitely be wanting to, to bank some. But I think it's just a matter of if you're clearing red dots, all good. If you're going sideways, probably not. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Well, that makes sense, mate. So you've got your score last week, 778, really nice uh, into 5,300th overall with a with a good week there and a, a solid round five rank. So looking at your squad there, you've got May out, Talungi out, Galvin, Pikura, Chan. So the five plays out. So double trade would make 18 or 17, depending on who you who you have traded. So talk us through some of the issues in your squad and, and then obviously the trades coming into this week. Yeah, so <clears throat> obviously I've got the Chan, Talungi, Piakora um, trifecta down there, which is <laughs> really good. Uh, I think last week I brought in Talungi and Fogarty. I just saw that Fogarty was so highly owned with coaches that uh, paid attention. And if he went really big and continued to make a bunch of money, I felt like I was going to get left behind. In hindsight, I wish I just got in DC or SJ instead and didn't go with the crowd. But at the end of the day, if Fogarty doesn't do super well, it doesn't really matter because everyone owns him. Um, but if he does really well and he gets a try finally and plays has a big game, then uh, it'll be nice to own him for sure. Yeah, and, so, you, and you've only got the three Raiders, so it's not too bad either. Yeah, and I mean, Levi... His time is is very uh, short in my team. Although keeps playing, he keeps going tries. <laughs> does keep storing tries. And this week, I'm looking at cheese out. So my hooker cover is is going, okay. and I'm looking at bringing in Nico Hines. So Taylor May is the other one that I'm <clears throat> looking to ship out. Um, we were talking about this earlier. I definitely could see how he can be a hold for a lot of teams. But to get Nico into this team, I basically have to trade two guys that are around that 600K and then go for a cheapie and a Nico. Mm -hmm. So the one up, one down strategy. Yep. And uh, I like Iro. I mean, we're rolling the dice again. Talungi last week, we we rolled Snake Eyes and we, we, lost, uh, <laughs> we lost two trades for like 20K or whatever he made. But uh, hopefully he comes back in the team. I'm just leaving him there for now, hoping he might come back in. I, as you can see, I've got Chan that I can trade out next week. Um, and, you know, the likes of Hutchison and, and Levi. So next week I'm kind of looking around the the Crichtons and the the Chevy Stewarts, but I'm happy in the Bloors, but I'm happy to kind of wait this week and see how that all shapes out. Yeah, that's fair, mate. And obviously, yeah, Chan sitting there as well. I suppose with him, with Talangi, Pikura's back two weeks. It does seem like the mail was exactly correct. Bloody physio. He thought that it might have just been a couple-week injury, but um, hopefully he's back in round eight because we're, we're hanging for him to score some points and make some money. But Chan and Talangi are probably next man up, aren't they? So they are they are easy to hold, easier to hold that way. In a situation, mate, at around, what, the 5,000 mark, you've, you do have sort of Ponga, Hines, Carrigan, sort of three of the best captaincy options, to be fair. Um, well, we expect Ponga, you know, now that he's kind of dominating at the moment. Uh, what do you see your strategy for people at this rank, at 5,000, the way you've done it with getting Hines? And then if you were about 20,000 like myself, does that differ, do you think? I don't think so. Not at this stage of the season, <clears throat> because between our ranks, there's probably not that many points. It's probably like 100 150 points, something like that. No, we... uh, I'm not sure if you know your, your points. 3,800 head-to-head head team is... What are you, 36? Yeah, 130. For, that's 21,000. 
So no, yeah, the strategy, the strategy Not much. stays. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. Uh, cool. Anything else on, on your team, mate? Uh, nothing too much. I'm glad that my uh, starting with Ponga, Turbo and Pat strategy has uh, finally worked out. It was a bit of a rough start there. And I was looking at, do I trade about, do I trade out Ponga before he loses too much cash? Um, I'm glad. And I'm glad I stuck with him. And this is why you stick with uh, some of your guns that you get in and you try and trade the the middling guys. And it also, it's a good note with the, the tail and May thing. Obviously we both jumped on in, in round two and uh, we both went chasing the points. It was eye test based for, from the two games that we saw, but um, you know, trading out McInnes to tail and may is just a, an all-time great trade <laughs> <laughs> that's what i did in round two so yeah it just it just means that like looking back on it i think banking those trades in after round one was the play and not rushing out some of your decisions that you'd spent a lot of time in the preseason making these decisions around who you're going to start with i think trading in round after round one is probably a bad strategy. It's better to wait for that extra week of information. So yeah, that's, that's a big learning I think from this year and we'll be tempted again to trade next year round two, but I think, um, yeah, it's very important to just hold on and just trust your decision-making process in the preseason. That's fair. I'm going to claim that my trade was McInnes to Terrell May and which it was, <laughs> but that sounds better. The second one, I can't remember who it was, but it was double maze for sure. Um, yeah, awesome, mate. So thanks for that. And any further plans going into next week or Heinz was kind of the stop gap and you, you're you pretty well set just to play off what happens? Uh, no, so definitely looking at Angus Crichton and okay. Chevy for next week, probably yep. trading out uh, Hutchison next week to, to Angus Crichton and then maybe a Chan to Chevy Stewart. That's kind of... The rough idea, but if if we see Bloor come out and have a huge game, then I could try and find cash for him. But I think the easiest trades for me at the moment are just the Hutchison out. Like once we get Galvin back, I won't need a backup half in Hutchison. So yep. he's about to go into buy as well. So yeah, I think that's an easy move. Yeah, for sure. Levi is probably somewhere on the chopping block, but yeah, Talangi and Chan, I suppose, are there as well. There's, there's it's never ending. We're never going to stop trading, are we? All right, mate. So um, head-to-head team for me, it seemed pretty simple. I had a bunch of guys out, but the two trades I'm going for in this one, having Satili, I think just going straight to Crichton is a very easy one. And then I've gone Blaze Talungi to Kale. Iro in that one as well. So leaves 170 in the bank. I am holding Cleary. And what about that news that we just found out that you know his rehab hasn't really gone as well as they would have hoped. And he might miss next week. So obviously a big kick. Uh, to the to Cleary holders, me and you and our in our teams, overall teams anyway, have have sold him. But I've had a few questions already made about do I just go Cleary to Hines? And what would you say about that? It's tough. I think you've held Cleary for two weeks. You probably should hold for this week. But at the same time, I can see a big upside with going the Nico captaincy this week, which is why I'm kind of, you know, trading out cheese this week and not waiting not waiting a week is because i just see south at the moment as a team to target with the yeah you know the whole coach crisis thing the maybe mal meninga is going to come in next week so there is big upside going cleary to Hines, but you just mm-hmm. got to think about is it worth to trade like is, is it worth the trade and will you want cleary back yeah, completely fair. Um, I suppose, yeah, thinking this is a head-to-head team, I'm, I'm looking a little bit more at the cash generation. Obviously, can get points and cash from Crichton and uh, similar to that with with Iro as well, that um, yeah, if, he, if things pan out perfectly, then he's going to make a lot of money and score really well as well. So that's my theory with that one and then could potentially use that cash, the 169 for a good upgrade next week. And I'm sitting there without a Ponga, without a Heinz, obviously, but sitting there with Cleary. If he does come back next week, he comes straight into my my captaincy. And I just think that fixing fixing the weeds, fixing the, you know, the the, the red dots and whatever, you know, the, the buy dots in your side are probably the best play, especially from a head to head perspective. If you're if you want to, you know, 
three out of your five matchups at the moment, then I think that's the easy strategy. If you're like one out of five, then you'd probably chase the points, right? With a Heinz upside or something. Yeah, for sure. If you were one out of five, definitely I would go for that trade. Yeah, awesome. All right, we're going to jump into my overall team now. Guys, my team. I've been racking my brain. This is the hardest week of trades for me, considering I want Ponga, I want Hines, I want Crichton, and Kale Iroh is probably the, the cheap guy that we do want this week. And having Rapana as a trade out, you've then got Talangi there. That's two clear ones for me. And if I was to make those two trades, I could, I could get up to <laughs> my issue here, guys. All right, let's... Lay it all out. We've got Cam Murray, right? So he's going to have a buy next week. He's carrying a bit of an injury. He's probably my, he's going to be my ticket to Hines or Cleary, right? So if that's the case, that's 800K. It's not too far from those guys, which is a good, but that means when in round eight, when we've got Hughes and Salmon on a buy, I'm sure to mid as well. So if I'm wanting a Ponga, this week, I can go Rapana and Piakura to Ponga. I'm, I'm 8K short, um, unfortunately, I think, from from getting what I exactly what I want from Talangi and Rapana up to yeah up to what I'd hope. So the next options down from, from Ponga's 730-odd is to go for Turbo. What are your thoughts on Turbo this week as a buy? I think Turbo is a good buy any week. He, we saw last week against Penrith, he scored 66. So, I mean, it is the Warriors, though. It is away. So, I'm not expecting... I'm expecting, like, a 40. Anything above that is great. And Turbo can do anything above that, for sure. But Warriors away isn't an easy, easy game. Yeah, for sure. Uh, a little bit higher than that and needing a mid for round eight. I'll definitely need that. Do we... You know, do I have to go this week? No. Can I go? Do I have to go next week? No, I could wait till round eight. So there's that as well for a mid. But Cam McInnes is the option of that at that nice high price. So to bring him back in, thoughts on him as a buy this week? I actually really like it. I mean, the bench looks really good. Talakai and Burns on the bench. He's got a few coming back. It's my like Rudolph and Hamlin Ueli are both on the extended. So if it's not this week. They'll probably be back next week. And we just we just don't know the minutes. So hey? 40 in round just, one, 80 in round four, round four. Wild. <laughs> I just think the low side for McInnes, we saw it in round one, is like around that low 40s. And yeah. the high, the upside is 80 minutes. So if you get an average of 60, so some if some games he's going to play big minutes and some games they'll like there'll be HIAs and whatnot, and he'll play extended minutes, and some games he might get an early mark and play 50 or 45, I still think it's going to average out into that high 50s, low 60s at this point. But yeah, we'll see. Yeah, because I think if I if I muck around with the Blaze Talangi trade and get um and get Kale, I'm not super excited on a Chevy at the moment. Um just worried about how he's going to score for one. But he's a, if I did go for Chevy, I could go Chevy and Ponga in this scenario, which could be cool, but let's just do that one there. And then if I'm mucking around with with Rappina, that leaves me with 730. So yeah, 8K short of Ponga, but it allows me all of those options I was just talking about where you're looking at. So price, we got, scroll that back up. So down to 730. It's um, Robson on the dot. How good of a season he's had. That's frustrating. Um, McInnes helps now with the mid situation. I was looking at like all these random picks um, if I went for Crichton instead of Eero for the Blaze trade, and then I was looking at mids like Jolliffe <laughs> and like Francis Molo and these types of guys. So um, I was like, yeah, I should probably get out of those weeds <laughs> in the mid-range, yeah, yeah. mid-range middles. Um, yeah, the McInnes ones, because they play around 13, 14 too. Which is yeah, no, I really like the McInnes pick. I wish yeah. I'd never sold him, but uh, yeah. Here we are. He's a good trade in. He's still only made 6K. So, yeah, because if that's the case for me, like if I'm happy to hold, I know you mentioned that you think, you know, Kraz is a clear hold. I've heard a few of the pods say um, that he, they think he is too. Obviously, he's averaging 42. Like it's one great score in amongst some crap. But if I wasn't to bring in a wing fullback, I just went, nut. I can't get Ponga. I can't get Turbo. 
I need to sort out this situation because I think the McInnes one, it helps me save trades too because I don't have to worry about my mids in that in that week. I have a lot of wing fullbacks. Like I'm holding Taylor May. So I've got the four fullbacks. I've got a couple of centers at least at this point. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting I don't know if Karaz will be a hold if you've got him and May. Well, that's I think Karaz. I, I don't. Yeah, I think only one of them is a clear hold if you've got both Karaz and May, just mm-hmm. because of the the amount of centers that we cheap centers that we have coming through. I mean, even though Talangi isn't playing anymore, we've got Iro, and then we've also got potentially Stewart playing wing fullback. And you've already got, you know, Pap and Gutho. Yeah. My thoughts, if, if I didn't go Euro this week, I could grab him next week and he's like my little downgrade from Hacho or whoever it's going to be um, to then go up with Murray would be sweet. Um, but yeah, the other option would be to trade out Talon if I reverse them to uh, to trade out Talon. Um, and then uh, he could go straight to Ponga which could be cool. Um, so I'd need an extra 50 odd for that, which could be cool. And then I could just bring in Crichton with the second trade, which will be fairly easy there. Cause that drops down. Yeah. I'd have like 50 in the bank after May and, or yeah, it's Karaz and, um, and Rapana to like Crichton and Crichton and Ponga. And then could muck around with the next week, but McInnes might be the play. Hey, yeah, man, you've got you've got a lot of options. I see you're of um, you're not a whole lot closer to, to no. finding the exact ones, but uh, yeah, that does I think help because it gets rid of Talangi, hey? Because I like my focus, and I think a lot of people, what a lot of people's focus should be, they might be in a worse situation than me with the red dots. Like if if we've got a bunch of them sitting there, and we've got the dogs buy coming up, we've got eels buy coming up. If you've got three of them, or so, or Talangi's gone now, so two, um, or whatever it is. If you've got Brown, a bunch of guys, Gutho. And then you've got the Raiders one in round 10. It's very it's gonna be very hard to hold red dots, hey. Yeah, it's gonna be really important in the next few weeks to clear out all your red dots, especially once we get the three trades. I think getting on it early, like next week, is a good opportunity to clear out all of your red dots because we've got those back-to-back buys, and then we've got origin, then we've got round 14, which is gonna be a hectic buy as well with roosters and the Raiders on the bye. So, yeah, we're coming into a very busy season with red dots. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Like, listening, you know, going through this now, it it does seem like he's the clearest as much as I'm scared of Ponga and stuff. Like, having someone that you can just lock into average 50 or 55 or 50, whatever it's going to be, get him all the way through to round 16. Seems like the play, hey? And that means I can get rid of Talangi Rapana. And that means I'm on the Euro train, hey? Yeah, I like it. So is the plan to then go Murray to Nika or Cleary next week? Yeah. And I'd need to, I would need to find another way to get uh, to downgrade someone to get to. Well, that means no Crichton, I suppose, this week too. Um, I'd have to find another way to get down to him. Like to get someone down to go up to the Heinz or Cleary, so it doesn't make it too much clearer, does it? Because <laughs> we need to then find a cash cow. Unless yeah, no, if Crichton's good, then one of the one of those mid range fullbacks or something I could go to him. But like, do you go potentially for Heinz this week with the high upside captaincy? And then get in McInnes next week for Murray, or is that not possible to, with the red dots you want to trade out? Uh, that would mean Hines would to get him this week would be. I think I can do Karaz or May, and Rapana. Down to it, I think it just fits. But it's tricky. Obviously, yeah, you want to clear the red dots. So Rapana has to go for sure. And I want and Crichton just, to do so. <laughs> yeah. No, I think um, Scoop made a really good point in your video earlier that we all bought Lukey. Uh, well, most of that us bought great. Lukey at 500K. And uh, he has Angus at, you know, 430-odd. And uh, people 
are a bit on the fence. So For the I think we're all, bit, yeah. we're all a bit shy after, you know, getting bitten by Robbo earlier this year with the Wong Satili and then also being bitten by Talungi just last week. So I think a lot of people are gun shy to jump on the likes of Eero and Crichton this week just because of those uh, those facts. But if you, if you went back to the start of the season, we'd all be starting with all these guys. So Yeah. Yeah, I suppose the other one I could look at is if I just went the two cheaper guys, Eero and um and Crichton this week for Talungi and Rapana, bank some cash and then could do the Murray and maybe even get McInnes or get another mid next week. That, that's the other one. And it obviously doesn't make me score well this week. <laughs> Being ranked 20,000, but um, yeah, so many to think about. So many things to think about. Um, Probably won't know until we do have to make the decision tonight though. So that helps, I suppose. Like I'm forced to make the decision rather than having to sit on it for another day or two, but thanks Maddie, for jumping on. Um, we'll try and get you on for the buy, hold, sell. We'll uh, organize it a bit better. I, um, I just messaged him on the morning of like, Hey Barry, you're right to do this. <laughs> Uh, didn't happen this week but um yeah it's cool thanks for jumping on mate and uh let us know your trades guys in the comments below and uh, we'll see you in the next one no worries thanks man